Okay, today is the start of something um, new, a new idea, something very important, which actually leads us into uh, understanding if a line that you have as the line that best fits, you know, because that's what we were just finding yesterday. So what we're wondering is, this, this least squares regression line, this line of best fits, is it a good fit for the data? Does it, is it a good predictor? If you were going to predict values with this, is this line a good predictor? So one of the things we have to do is see how close the actual data is. Okay, so we want to consider how close are these actual pieces of data from this prediction line. And this least squares regression line is all of the predicted values. Okay? So, we're going to talk about how far away the actuals are away from the predicted, and that is called the residual. So, the definition of a residual is this. The difference between the actual data's value and the predicted data's value. Okay? So once we find the difference between the actual and the predicted, that's an amount. And that distance is your residual. Okay? The, the formula that you could compute for the residual is you want to take your observed value. That would be these actual amounts. Okay? Your actual amounts are the information that comes in your data that you collected. And subtract away what was predicted or what was estimated. Um, also, it could be called uh, what's expected. Okay. Now, the next question is, what on this picture right here, this original scatter plot, what represents the expected values? The lines. Very good, the lines. This line is what we expect the values to be about, and then the actual pieces of data are what? The observed ones, which are these dots, okay? So these dots are the actual, the line is the predicted values, or the expected values. Okay, so therefore, here is a picture of what the residual is. The residual would be the distance from the actual to what's expected. Okay, here's the predicted. Actual to the predicted. And that distance is your residual. So, another way you can remember this is think about this being an AP class. And you can compute the residual by going actual data minus the predicted data. So, the actual value minus the predicted value. Okay. All right, so what I'm going to do right now is actually have you take, let's take a look at this um, source of data, this information. This is about the age in years. So we're going to, that is our X, and we're hoping that if you tell somebody the age in years, then you can predict their approximate weight in pounds. So here are some pieces of data we collected. And I want you to go ahead and put those into your L1 and L2. And then we're going to um, go ahead and graph that. Let's make sure that you can come up with this. Let's make sure that based on the past two days' assignment, you can come up with that original scatter plot. So do that right now. <laughs> All right. So, everybody, let's know. What I just asked you to be able to get was this uh, calculator picture of your data. And it should be looking just like this original scatter plot, except for the line is not in there. So let's get the line in there. And here's how you're going to do that. Of course, we need to calculate the equation of the line. So stat over to calc, number 8, enter. Okay, and that gives you this information. So first, my question is, what is 40.5, what value does that represent? Good, that's the y-intercept because it is the a by itself. The 1.272 represents the slope. 
So, here's the deal. Into my calculator, into y equals, but actually, let's write this here. The predicted weight equation is 40.5, that's the y-intercept, plus 1.272 times, and what's the x value? H. Okay, very good. So we're going to go and put that into our y equals. So we'll go to y equals and go ahead and type that equation in, and then it will show up on your graph like it does on the picture there. Plus 1.272x. And so when I look at that, the line of best fit, the lead square expression line is going right there through the data. And it looks like this original scatter plot picture. Okay. Alright. Kind of pausing, seeing if, if we're all getting that. We're all okay. Hi, how are you doing? Good. Alright. So now that we have that, <clears throat> I want to talk to you about how this original scatter plot transforms into this thing called a residual plot. Okay, this is the goal today is to understand what this residual plot is, how it became this, and here's what happened. This line right here, any dot that falls on this line would have what value of residual? If any point actually fell on this line, what would its residual be? Zero. Good. And so any point on this line would be zero residual because it is actually what's predicted. So this line equates to this horizontal line in the residual plot. Look at the value right here of the residual. This y-axis is the residual size. And if something is right here on this line, then it has a residual of zero. Okay? Anything above the line has what kind of size residual as far as the sign goes? Would this be a positive or a negative residual? Okay, good. These over here are positive residuals. And let me just show you that these three values above the line correspond to these three values right here. Do you see? These three values here are these three pieces of data on the residual plot. Okay? Because essentially what's happened is this. The calculator has taken this value here. I'm going to go ahead and connect these two together. Okay? It's taken this group right here. And then, uh, let me get those guys together. Hello. I'm trying to be all technical and it's not working. Okay. Anyway, so it's going to take this line right here. And it's going to basically flatten it out to this line. Okay. And these also are going to flatten out and become these values over here. Okay? So those points are all just translating flat. They are flattening out and becoming those values there. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look then at um, some of the other values. Not too many points. So let me clear everything off. Okay. What kind of residual do you think these points below the prediction line would have? Good. These would have your negative residual. And so then you can see over here, these correspond with these values. You see every single one that is falling below the line is corresponding tingling there. Now, I will tell you that it kind of, this picture on the right basically takes this information right here and zooms in on it. So that is why these distances here seem a little bit more spread out and farther apart than these did. 
because it takes this value here on the left and it kind of zooms in on that picture to create this picture on the right. Okay, so now I want you to, we're going to learn how to make this picture on the right. Okay, you already have this picture on the left. And so now let's talk about how to get this picture on the right. So here we go. The instructions are actually right here below in this paragraph. And so I'm going to walk you through that also. First thing says, put the data in your list one and list two. Graph the original scatter plot. We already have that. Determine the least squares regression line. Did we do that? Have we done the least squares regression line for our data? Yes. Now let me tell you something. This is probably the number one mistake that my students make. Whenever you go to the next problem, if you do not recalculate this least squares regression line of your new data, then you're going to be off on your residuals and everything is going to be messed up. So, as a rule, if you put new data in, automatically compute the new equation of the line. Okay? Again, if you put new data in, so when we go to the next example, automatically calculate the new equation of the line. Okay, so back to this. All right, we're going to go to list three, and we're going to get our cursor on top of the L3 icon. So here we go. Come over here to stat, edit, and I'm going to clear. I already had some stuff in my L3. Let me clear it out to get like yours. If you have something in your list three, then you want to clear it out because it's probably old data from another problem. So you put your arrow up here on top of the L3, press the clear button, and enter, and it'll clear the entire list. Okay, so now I'm going to command the calculator to give me the residuals. So I go to list three. See this black cursor? It needs to be located on top of the L3 icon. That's another thing. People get a... Um, a syntax error if you do not. In fact, I'll show you what happens. If you do not have your cursor on top, watch this. Okay, right here. Error data type. Okay, a lot of times if I get an error and go to is one of my options, you go to it because it'll blink on the problem. Okay, so don't at this point just, you know, try to quit out of it. It'll kind of guide you to what the problem is. So I'll go to this and see it's saying that you can't do this because your cursor is in the wrong place. I mean, you don't know that, but that's, that's what the problem is. Sometimes it's off the problem becomes clear. Sometimes you had something in your Y equals and you didn't even know it. It was in your backpack and the buttons got pushed. And so sometimes you had something weird on it and that's what the problem was. Okay. So when your cursor is on this L3, we're going to go like this. Right here. Press the second and stat. So second, stat. And one of your things should say resid. That stands for residuals. If one of your numbers does not say residuals, then guess what? You haven't calculated the equation of the line. If you do not have one that says residuals, then your calculator is not thinking of a line. So I'm just going to press the number 7. <laughs> so I am now commanding my calculator to compute the residuals and place them into L3. I hit enter, and then it's automatically computed those residuals. Okay? But before we leave this, I want to show you what the heck all these numbers mean in reference to this scatter plot here, the residual plot. So here we go. All right. This first number in L1 says its value is 10.5. That's the X value, okay? So locate the 10.5 on this graph. Picture the X value of 10.5. Find that. I think it's like about right here somewhere, okay? So there's the X value of 10.5. Now, here, this is your x value, this is the actual, okay, and then this is the residuals, this is what's happening. But look, this problem is saying 54 
is or has a residual of positive 0.12899. That means 54 is just a little bit bigger than predicted. And let's look over here at our picture. It's this dot right here. Boom. You see this dot right here? It was just a teensy bit above that flat line. So it is that value right there. That's the one that that's representing. Okay, let's do another one. Okay, let's do 13. An x value of 13. Locate that over here. That is about right here. Okay. So this is saying that the data was 58 and the residual is 0.94898. So it's about 1. So this is saying that the actual is about one above the predicted. Okay. The actual is about one above the predicted. And so let's look here. There it is. Is that located about one above the predicted? Because here's the predicted. The line is what's predicted. And so then this is above that. Okay. All right. Let's do the next one. Well, one last one because it's a negative one. Let's look at the value at 18.5. That's located here. So this is saying 62 is 2 pounds below predicted. Okay, so that means that's this value right here. And do you see how it is 2 below the predicted value? So if 62 is 2 below the predicted, then what's the predicted for that? 60, what? 4. And this number is 64 because 62 is the actual and it is 2 below predicted. Okay, I know that's tedious looking at those problems, but uh, I need you to make that connection between those numbers and what's happening on the graph. Okay, so now you have that in your calculator. The final step is let's get this picture into your calculator. Let's talk about how to get that picture. So the final instructions are these. Now the calculator has computed the residual values, so graph the residual plot by plotting L1 and L3. That means when you go to second y equals... See this stat plot? It's currently showing L1 and L2. But I want to not show L1 and L2. I want to show L1 and what's the other one I want to show? I want my Y list to be, what's the Y value here on the picture? The residuals. So I change this L2 to an L3 by pressing second 3. And that just changed the L2 to the L3. Okay. So then once you do that, zoom 9. And there is this picture here, which should be looking just like this one here. Okay. It has the same pattern. The dots are all located in about the same place. All right. So this is your residual plot. Okay. Very good. So the next thing I want to do is have us do, so now I've walked you through one completely. Now you are going to do one by yourself, <clears throat> and we're going to start with this one. Let me first uh, talk about what the problem is about. It's important that you have an understanding about what this problem is telling you. So let's, let's not skip that. Here we go. <clears throat> All right, this problem says, women made significant gains in the 1970s in terms of their acceptance into professions that had been traditionally populated by men. To measure just how big these gains were, we will compare the percentage of professional degrees awarded to women in 1973-74 to the percentage awarded in 1978-79. All right, so for example, here's what this says. In the early 1970s, so these are going to be our X values. In dentistry, for example, 2% of the dentistry degrees were given to women. However, 
by the time 78, 79 rolled around, the later 70s, 11.9% of the dentistry degrees were awarded to women. So that increased. And in general, you see these increasing. Now, I do not recommend going and changing these into decimals. They're all in percent, so just leave them all. I put in my calculator 2, 11.5, 11.2, and so on. So just go ahead now, put all of those numbers into L1, and then you have blank values right here. I want to, I'm going to stop, you know, at a minute here, I'm going to walk around and make sure you can come up. I want to see these two pictures on your calculator. So as soon as you get one of these, Show it to me, and then I'll know you know how to do this. Okay, so take that time to do that now. Other values. Let's see what other values we can get on this. Okay. When you graph these, make sure you did an appropriate um, axis. So I could tell that my numbers over here on the left were going from 1 to 11, so I just kind of spread those out equally. The ones on the right were going from about 5 to 30, so I spread those out evenly. Okay, make sure you are also putting your labels. Notice that this label here is the residual of the Y values. So let's talk about what's X and what's Y. If you look back here, the X values are the percent of degrees in 73, 74 that were women's. And the Y values are the percent degrees in 78, 79. So let's actually write in context the equation of the line. Okay, are you ready? What are you predicting it with this problem? You're predicting the degrees in which years? Good, you're predicting the percent of degrees in 78 and 79, and you are predicting those from your knowledge about what values? The degrees in 73, 74. Very good. So what ended up being your equation? Wasn't it something like 7 plus 1.72? And then the x value is the percent degrees in 73, 74. So that's your x. So you went and put 7 plus 1.72x into your y equals, and that is how you got this line right here. Okay, so now let's do some of these computations. Now that we have all of our data in and we kind of understand what our equation is, let's do some computations. Shortcut for this equation is this. Because the words are kind of long, so there's just a quick shortcut reason on that. All right, so C says find the residual for optometry. Okay. So we go to the data on the previous page. All right. And I want and I'm going to highlight the line for the optometry. Okay? All right. So, this means the x value is 4.2. Please tell me what does 13 represent? Is it the actual or is it the predicted value in 78, 79? It is actual. These ones over here are the values that actually occurred. So the actual was 13. So what's missing? What do I not have if I want to find the residual? Yeah, I need predicted because how do you find residual? Actual minus predicted. Well, I got my actual, so I need to find the predicted. How can I find the predicted value? Do what? Good. Plug it into the equation. So to get this predicted, the predicted y value is the equation 7 plus 1.72 times the x value of 4.2. Very good. That gives you a value of 14.224. All right. So this is the one that is predicted. So now let's go ahead and put this in here. Actual minus predicted would be these values. 13 minus 
14.224, and that residual is negative 1.224, and these, the label on these were percents, these were all in percentages of the degrees. Yes, and, but I need to teach you how they got that, okay? Now, I want to connect this to our picture up above. Right here, see this 4.2? That is this value right here. And what is this residual value? Look over here. Guess what? Da -da -da -da. It's negative 1.4 or 224. Okay. Now, Clayton said you can just look in your L3. True. Okay, but I have to teach you how they get that. I mean, I can't just leave you to say, oh, just let your calculator get it for you. Okay, I have to explain to you where that comes from. So let's do letter D. Find the residual for veterinarian medicine. Veterinary medicine. So let, what do we go? We need to go over here. Okay, so what do you want to look at first on this? What data do we need to look at? The veterinary medicine. Okay, so X is 11.2, the actual is 28.9, and how do I find the predicted? The predicted for veterinary medicine is 7, it's our equation, plus 1.72 times 11.2, that number is 26 point, um, what is it, 3? 308 doesn't sound right. Yeah. 361? Oh, 264. Okay. <laughs> Woo! No, because I remember, I remember from earlier in the day. I knew 308 didn't sound right. Okay. Now, hold on. He could have used a different decimal than I did here, like went out further. All right, so let's go ahead and go over here. Our actual was 28.9 minus our predicted, which was 26.264. And that gives us a value of whatever it is, 2.336, I don't know, something along those lines. Hey, let's analyze this in the picture up above. Okay, I'm looking at 11.2, that's like over here. Here it is. This value is about, actually I drew it a little low, it probably should be about right there, 2.336. Okay, so you do not have any homework tonight because what I'm going to do tomorrow is explain how to get all of these. That's a really important thing. And then we'll finish the notes tomorrow and you will do your homework, actually, the part one homework in class, okay? So you can help each other with any errors you come across.